Okay, the Tesla supercharger adapter for Livewire 1. Tesla is going to introduce, before the end of this year, a CCS adapter for Tesla superchargers in the United States that allow all electric vehicles capable of DC fast charging on CCS to utilize the Tesla supercharger network. Now, this became really uh, front of mind on August 16, 2022, when a tweet from Sawyer um, uh, Merritt highlighted a new feature that appeared on the Tesla app for Tesla owners in the United States. So if you had a Tesla in the United States, all of a sudden on your app, you got a new screen that, uh, or a new feature on a new screen uh, that, that disappeared after a few minutes and people were able to screen capture it to get it. This is the picture of what it looked like. Uh, what it is, is it clearly shows a two-part membership plan for Livewire One owners. It's a plan you can either pay as you go or pay a monthly price to get a lower uh, charge price, but it is a two-part plan for non-Tesla owners to charge on Tesla superchargers. So we know that the software is in process. We know that Elon Musk promised this to us uh, before the end of the year. And we also know that uh, the federal and state governments are uh, handing out money, uh, tens of thousands of dollars per uh, charger to uh, get these things built across the United States as part of the uh, Biden plan for uh, inflation reduction. Now, Tesla, is applying for this money, uh, federal money and state money, uh, by uh, creating what they're terming a Tesla magic dock. Now, on the left here, we have a picture of a, a Tesla cur or a Tesla charger the way they currently are with one plug on them. The unit on the right, if you look at where the plug plugged or the end of the cable goes into the charger, there is a device there that allows you to either pull off the wire with a Tesla plug on the end of it, or by moving it around in a certain way, you can unlatch a CCS adapter on the end of the Tesla cable. Now, uh, this adapter is anchored by a mechanism to the charger and cannot be removed. Now, the reason it cannot be removed is for the charging unit to qualify as a CCS DC fast charger uh, under the terms of the federal and state governments, it cannot be removed. So by keeping that adapter as part of the charger, uh, they can uh, build chargers that uh, that qualify for the federal and state subsidies the way they're written now. Uh, if they had an adapter by itself, that would mean that the charger would not be a CCS charger. And so what they're doing is they're doing a workaround to get the money whereby the adapter unlatches from the charger is somehow tethered so uh, it can't be removed. Now, uh, what they're doing, at least in the, in the plans they've made for California so far, is they're saying that when they build superchargers like the one in, the ones in Santa Monica right now I think they're building a, a, a 100 uh, stalls in, in one place what they're doing is they're dedicating a certain number of those stalls to CCS so a certain number of stalls will have the magic dock a certain number won't and the ratio when they build out uh, new chargers or convert old ones that ratio is what's going to allow them uh, to qualify uh, for the government subsidies so uh, let me give you a little bit of an idea I went over to Pasadena to give you an idea of how this all is going to work okay we're at the a supercharger Tesla supercharger in Pasadena California now what's happening is if you look at the uh, Tesla plug it's a proprietary plug that just Tesla has and if you look at the live wire plug it's a standard CCS plug so what's going to happen is Tesla is having an adapter that's going to plug in that CCS plug so what happens you come up you unplug the cord put the adapter in the end and then plug it directly into the motorcycle. That's how it's gonna work. And what's gonna happen, there's gonna be RFID uh, communication between the uh, plug and the adapter. So it's going to be able to track the charge level of the bike and transmit it to the cloud uh, through your cell phone application. All right, now the question is, 
what happened or what would happen if Tesla unbundled the magic adapter. So right now it has to stay tethered to the charger to qualify for the uh, government incentives. Uh, what would happen if you took that off? Now the magic adapter is a small lightweight device that actually is small enough to fit under the seat of a live wire one in the area where the uh, where the 110 volt uh, charging is, you can pull that cable out and fit the adapter in there. And I'll show you in a minute how I know that. Uh, next, it could connect to a smartphone uh, to do tracking and payment processing. So in other words, if this was untethered, you could order one, have it sent to you, hook up on your cell phone over, over Bluetooth. The serial number on the charger can be tied into the billing on your phone. So when you plug it in, uh, you don't even have to enter anything in. You just plug it in and it knows who it is and knows where it is and it can start charging just like a regular Tesla car would. So after it's plugged in after the charging's done, because it's hooked onto your uh, car phone, uh, they can actually use that information to do uh, route planning. So uh, that's a very cool thing too. Now, the nice thing about Livewire is that through the Livewire app, uh, the you can track uh, speed and the level of the battery. So Theoretically, you could do calculations in the app uh, to tell you to slow down if you're going too fast to make it to the next charging station. Now, when you do Tesla route planning on a Tesla, if you're driving along and you're driving too fast or there's too much wind or something going on that you're not going to make it, it tells you to slow down. And uh, if you're still not going to make it, it reroutes you to a charger where you can make it in real time. Also, if there's too many people at the charger where you're going to or a bunch of people showed up that Tesla wasn't expecting, it adapts to the congestion and sends you uh, to a charger that's not as busy. And lastly, it does cost optimization. There are certain times and certain chargers uh, where they vary the price and uh, you can set it up to get you there in the cheapest way possible. Now you might say that this is kind of pie in the sky, won't really happen too far away. Well, guess what? Something very, very similar already exists. Here's the game changer right here. It's a adapter allowing Tesla to charge on CCS. So what happens? CCS to Tesla. What Tesla's gonna do is come out with the opposite, which will be Tesla to CCS. So you see they're charging their Tesla at a regular um, regular CCS charger, they're converting CCS to Tesla plug. What Tesla's gonna do is come out with the opposite plug, which is uh, Tesla to CCS. So that's the game changer. That's how they're gonna do it in the United States. They're not gonna have to add a bunch more wires. They're gonna totally dominate the charging industry. All right, so the next thing, next question that comes up is why on earth would you switch, switch from a Tesla supercharger to a CCS charger? Because Tesla superchargers are always working, they're fast, they're reliable, everything works perfectly, they're where they need to be, everything's perfect, so why would you switch to CCS? Well, what happened is uh, the lady in the car who was doing it uh, did not want to appear on YouTube, which I can totally understand, but she told me that the reason she was doing it is because many CCS chargers are free, including the one she was charging at. So she was getting a free charge. So what she did is she uh, went uh, on the internet to a company called Lectron, and I found out there's many others, and she bought an adapter for $249.95, got it shipped to her, and now she can charge her car for free on the many, many CCS chargers uh, that are out there for free. Now, in my previous videos where I've talked about Preston and the cost of electricity and all that kind of thing, I put the cost in there as if you had to pay for it. But the reality is many level three chargers, or I'm sorry, many DC fast chargers are free. And I think the reason they're free is they're trying to promote them and get people to use them so they're free. But the one this lady was charging at had been free for over a year. So she doesn't even charge at home. She puts the adapter in her car, gets a charge off the fast charger and doesn't pay any money for fuel at all. Now, the only thing that is keeping the Magic Adapter from working on a Livewire 1 is Tesla enabling the protocol. So in other words, obviously the adapters are no problem. Tesla is going to start out by tethering them to the chargers to get the incentives. 
But the reality is, is that these things are cheap. The only thing that's keeping Tesla from doing it or keeping anybody from doing it is Tesla is not enabling the protocol to make this happen on their chargers. Now, there's no telling how long Tesla is going to play this game to get the subsidies uh, before they do it the right way. But when they do, when they unbundle these uh, magic adapters uh, from the Tesla chargers, uh, they are going to totally dominate the public charging infrastructure because other companies don't share information between themselves. So in other words, when you charge at EVgo, Electrify America has no idea. They don't know how much you charge, where they charge. They're all separate billing accounts. A lot of them want to prepay like EVgo wants a prepay on your credit card to be able to enable the charger on your phone. I mean, it's just nuts. So not only do they have crazy service, crazy bad service, but they've got a crazy billing plans. Many of them do. They don't talk to each other. They don't share information. And they also don't keep track of the information of the cars they're charging to know where they're going and where new chargers might be done. So this lack of sharing information and, and lack of commonality is going to absolutely crush uh, the other companies that, prefer, that to provide public charging services if Tesla ever decides to uh, unbundle uh, the uh, magic adapter and make it work for, for, for everyone. Um, and the other key is, is the uh, public chargers, and at least all the ones that I've done, uh, that would be EVgo, Electrify America, ChargePoint, on and on. None of them have anything in their app which is, char which is tracking the battery level uh, of a live wire or any vehicle while you're driving. And of course, Tesla does this as part of their app, and that's an absolute game changer. Because the Tesla adapter will be able to track the motorcycle, you'll be able to get all of the Tesla features in regard to route planning. So the adapter allows Tesla to find out where your bike is, how much the charge is, and knows where you're going. So it's gonna indicate on your Tesla app how far you have to charge in order to get to your destination. So this is a real game changer because everybody at a regular charger charges up to the uh, total amount of the battery or up pretty high so they think they can make it, when in reality they don't need to charge that far. So Tesla, 100% of the time, is gonna tell you how far to charge your motorcycle to get to the next charger. All right, now I got excited there. Uh, because I had just run into the lady with the uh, CCS to Tesla. So there's a few things I forgot to mention. First of all, Tesla route planning tells you how long to charge. Now, uh, nobody else is doing this. So in other words, uh, when I ride uh, in my wife's Model 3 between LA and San Francisco, we stop along the way at a place called Kettleman's. We plug in the car and it says, unplug in 12 minutes and it counts it down on a clock. So in 12 minutes, it's charging up the car enough to get to the next charger for the trip, uh, which in this case is just one stop, but it tells you uh, how long to uh, charge. Now, the other thing is when it's telling you where to charge, it looks at the chargers around in terms of availability. In other words, there's lots of these things all over the place, so they send you the one that's not busy, okay? When you're driving, if there's a lot of wind or something happens, you're driving really fast, you're not going to make it, it actually tells you on the car to slow down and keeps telling you to slow down, and if you don't slow down, it reroutes you, okay? So, I mean, crazy stuff. This is happening right now. Tesla is doing this right now. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you're driving along and the charge you're going to gets full or you're not going to make it, it routes you to another charger. And the other thing, which is really cool, is you never get routed to a broken charger. Tesla knows immediately when its chargers aren't working and they get them fixed really, really fast. And in the meantime, they don't send anybody there to charge. So, when Tesla decides to unbundle the magic adapter, uh, the Livewire 1 is going to have all the features uh, that the Tesla has in terms of managing the uh, charging. It's, it's going to be incredible. Now, we have been promised uh, by Elon Musk that we're going to have this up and running by the end of this year. It's clear that some of the software and interfaces have already leaked out. Uh, people are already uh, starting to do it. Uh, but, it, but in other countries like France, they actually have two different cables. In our case, we're just going to have an adapter which
which short term will be tethered to the charger and long term, hopefully Tesla will unbundle it. So it's a very, very exciting time uh, to be a Livewire One owner.